than all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, but they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The word of the Lord. Good morning, church. Our second lesson is taken from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. So church, I thank you in advance for your attention. I pray for your indulgence. I'm going to take a little bit of your time this morning to wrestle with the question what am I supposed to do on Father's Day? What am I supposed to do on Father's Day? Now let's be clear, um, I don't mean that question in the most obvious sense. I've been a father for going on uh, 17 years now, so this is my 16th Father's Day as a member of the club, and I know what I like to do on Father's Day. A whole lot of nothing. No chores, no projects, no brunch. Um, I like to put my feet up and relax on Father's Day. And if I'm going to go out, I like it to be to a ball game. I have a strong, strong preference for a Yankee game. But if the Yankees are not at home Father's Day weekend, then I don't mind going to Queens to see Inshallah's Mets. <laughs> and that's actually what we're gonna be doing today after church. So I know what I like to do on Father's Day. Um, and it might sound to you like I have Father's Day figured out and I've already answered my own question. You might be thinking, well, is he done now? Not yet. So remember, I said I didn't mean that question in its most obvious sense. I know what I like to do and what I like not to do on Father's Day. Um, and and Shala and the boys always take very good care of me on Father's Day. Um, but for me, today is about more than going to brunch or getting ties as gifts or going to a ball game with my family. Today is also an opportunity for me to reflect on what I'm trying to achieve as a father. So when I ask, what am I supposed to do? It's a shorthand way of asking and reflecting upon a bigger question. How should I be moving through this life, in this role, in this moment, through these challenges for the maximum benefit of these two boys. I was brought up with a somewhat traditional notion of what fathers do. They protect, 
They provide, they check, they guide, they equip their children for life beyond their childhood home. Now these are jobs that don't just sit with the traditional father, but they could sit with anyone of any gender, with any title, who is responsible for the upbringing and well-being of a young person. So anyone who carries that responsibility should be concerned about how they should be moving through this life, in this role, in this moment, through these challenges for the benefit, the maximum benefit of their charges. Now that in this moment part is tricky. In this moment, with everything that's going on today, makes playing that role extremely tricky. In this moment, how do we protect against gun violence and racist hatred and misogyny and anti-LGBTQ plus violence and xenophobia and terror in schools. In this moment, how do we provide in an atmosphere of economic chaos and public health crisis? In this moment, how do we check and guide when so much of their attention is hijacked by other voices that are pushing messages out to them for more hours of the day than we are? In this moment, how do we equip them for a world where too many people loosely use the label pro-life while taking every opportunity to denigrate life and ignore the real needs of the living? In this moment, it's as if our whole society has been possessed by the demons that Jesus drove out of that man among the Gerasenes. Yes, demons, I said demons. You were probably wondering how I was going to work demons into my Father's Day <laughs> message. Or, so here it is. You know, the, the, the reason that, that it seems odd that I dropped that in there is because in the modern day, we don't really think about actual physical demons roaming the earth and possessing people. For us today, uh, that sort of thing is mainly the province of fiction writers and film and TV content. Uh, everything from The Exorcist to Stranger Things. But literal or metaphorical, we recognize, at least I recognize, the desperation, the fear, the anguish, the hopelessness that those demons would have created in the family and friends of that possessed man. I admit that I feel some version of that confusion now when I contemplate my role as father, given the ills, the evil, that this world presents for our children. So then where is our hope as we try to move through this life, in these roles, in this moment, through these challenges for the maximum benefit of our young people. For me, there's hope in Jesus' instructions to the possessed man and in Paul's message to the Galatians. Luke tells us that the possessed man meets Jesus at the shore because his demons have driven him into a solitary existence. The scripture says, for a long time this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. He had been driven by his demons into, quote, solitary places, unquote. He was separated from his community. He was fighting evil alone. He was bearing the weight of his anguish in isolation. We do that too, oftentimes, don't we? 
We get overwhelmed by the darkness and we retreat. And in our retreat, our anguish often deepens. But look at what Jesus does for this man, though. He drives out his demons and returns him home, even though the man is interested in traveling with Jesus. Jesus sends the man back to town to spread the good news of what God has done and to re-engage with his community. That is where this man's strength, his courage, his resilience will come from going forward, from his village. To use uh, Paul's word from another translation of that same passage, the village will be his guardian. The members of that village are all God's children, regardless of how they have divided themselves. By sect, sex, status, or station, the villagers are all heirs to God's promise. Now, if we remember that we are all heirs to that promise, then we too will have the strength, courage, and resilience to face and cast out the demons that plague our society. So what am I supposed to do on Father's Day? I'm supposed to hold our children close and remind them that they are heirs to a great promise. They are members of a beloved community and that together with that community, they can face down any demon and they never need be driven into solitary places. As a father, I'd like to solve all my children's problems like a superhero, but I can't. But we can. And my most important job is to never let them forget that. Happy Father's Day, happy Juneteenth, and God bless. Now at this time, I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able and to recite with me the affirmation of faith printed in the bulletin. We believe that the church is called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That the church is called blessed because it is a peacemaker. That the church is witness both by word and by deed to the new heaven and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. We believe that God's life-giving word and spirit has conquered the powers of sin and death, and therefore also of irreconciliation and hatred, bitterness and enmity, that God's life-giving word and spirit will enable the church to live in a new obedience which can open new possibilities of life for society and the world. Amen.
Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, this morning especially, we're grateful for a Savior that will cross any barrier, travel any road, bridge any distance, for the one who is lonely, for the one who is afraid, for the one rejected. We ask that as his people, we might reach out to the lonely among us, that we might connect more sincerely with the fearful, that we might find creative ways to offer hope to the sick and to the hurting. We ask too that we might find our own hearts softened and our own hands open to accept that same help from others. Holy and righteous God, today as we commemorate the occasion of Juneteenth, we remember your charge that we love one another without distinction. We remember that you created each one of us in your image, even as our societies have failed to embrace this truth. We remember both the progress we have made and the work still ahead. Grant us then the grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us, like those of generations before us who resisted the evil of slavery and human bondage, to end every form and every manner of oppression. Help us to use our own freedom to bring justice among people and nations everywhere. Renew your spirit in us. Create in us clean hearts. Sustain us for the week ahead as we pray and seek to live continually the words that your son taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite us into a moment of giving. Whether you're joining us online or you're here in person, we invite you to give at lapcbrooklyn.org slash donate. If you're in the sanctuary, we'll also have a deacon at the door after worship, and you may place your offering in the plate. Your faithful tithes and your gifts to this church help to sustain our community's incredible projects and life-changing initiatives. Thank you so much for your generous support of the ministries of Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church.
gracious God, may we give generously today in spite of our limitations and fears that we might offer others our gifts with grateful hearts. Bless them and our lives to your service that they may reveal your glory, nurture faith, and manifest justice for all your children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>